working on a WordPress project sometimes can feel like being stuck in a groundhog day. You keep repeating same thing again and again every day and never finish the project. Adrian Toby is here to tell us how to overcome these blockers, how to end the projects, how to get out of the Groundhog's Day and launch the next project. Adrian has launched award-winning companies like Groundhog, Mailhawk, WP Simple Chat and Formlift. These companies help thousands of businesses, entrepreneurs, educators, creators and others to create high converting customer experience and communicate with their audience through email and SMS. Adrian, we are all yours. Hi, my name is Adrian. I am the CEO and founder of Groundhog. Super excited to be joining you for WordCamp India 2021 this year. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about something that I am extremely passionate about, as I'm sure you'll find out shortly, how to launch your next WordPress project in 90 days or less. Something I have a lot of experience with uh, and something that I see lots of people, my own customers, uh, business colleagues, acquaintances, and especially clients of old from my own WordPress agency days, I see people struggle with launching and bringing their WordPress projects to market, and not even necessarily just WordPress projects, but anything to market that they're working on uh, and they want to share with the general public. I see the failure to launch as something that I want to evangelize about, that I want to help people with uh, through my own courses and through my own products. Uh, and I'm going to share my philosophy about launching with you today. And I hope that you enjoy this. So without further ado, if you've ever struggled to finish a WordPress project on time, went over budget while creating a WordPress project, or you've had WordPress projects canceled either by a client or by yourself because it was just taking too long and you couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, then you are at the right presentation. You're listening to the right, the right talk and you're in the right place. This is exactly, these are exactly the things that I see people struggle with day in and day out. So during this presentation, you are going to learn my strategy for breaking down your projects into three simple phases to make big projects smaller, how to create clear direction for your WordPress projects so that there is a higher productivity rate and less confusion. You're gonna learn how to save time, money, and your own sanity when building your WordPress project so that you can actually launch in 90 days or less. So for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Adrian, I'm the CEO and founder of Groundhog. Uh, we help small businesses launch their funnel, grow their list, and scale their business. Uh, I own a few organizations, Mailhawk, Groundhog, Formlift, WP Simple Chat. We've won a few awards, we're a Stripe verified partner. Uh, and we've been doing lots of WordPress projects. Uh, I think our total plugin suite across all of our organizations is somewhere in the range of 60. <laughs> and uh, I've worked with literally hundreds of small businesses um, over uh, the last seven years of my being part of the WordPress community. Uh, thousands now that I'm a WordPress product developer, um, but hundreds before as an agency, uh, working with organizations around the world and here in Canada, uh, some of those small businesses listed here. I'm fairly familiar with launching WordPress websites. That's exactly what my purpose was. Built custom applications, custom plugins, custom themes, the whole gambit uh, for some of these organizations listed here uh, as an agency. And this was my first kind of uh, process or my first exposure to WordPress was first using WordPress uh, and then developing for WordPress for these small businesses and then becoming uh, a plugin author and plugin creator. And you guessed it, all of these organizations, all of these plugins, everything that I have built essentially uh, was developed, deployed and launched in 90 days or less. And I'm gonna share with you my strategy today on exactly how it is that we were able to accomplish that uh, and how we continue to iterate, deploy and optimize on our existing product suite so that we can create the best uh, experience for our customers uh, and obviously be more efficient and create better products that we get to sell and bring to market on a daily basis. So super exciting stuff, so stick around. What kind of projects are we talking about? WordPress sites, obviously, right off the top. A lot of people on this call probably specialize in WordPress site development. Uh, if you're building custom WordPress plugins, also counts WordPress courses, e-commerce stores, blogs, WordPress themes. Lots of WordPress listed here. This is WordCamp after all, but I do wanna state 
that this system that I'm about to share with you does not only apply to WordPress. If you're bringing anything to market, uh, if you want to share any expertise or knowledge or product that you have with the world, this system that I'm about to share with you applies to it across the board to be able to get your product, get yourself, get your business launched in 90 days or less. So I just want to see that even if you don't aren't using WordPress and you're just here because you like the vibe, this still applies to you. Why do WordPress projects fail to launch? I work with thousands of businesses. Thousands of businesses use our WordPress plugins. I've worked with hundreds of business on a much pers more personal one-to-one -one basis. Uh, so I have a, a very clear understanding of why WordPress projects fail because I see it all the time. I get cancellations. When, when people cancel the recurring fees for, for our software that we sell, 50% of the time, it's simply because their WordPress project never launched. Why does that happen? Well, I've asked these questions, and it usually comes down to three things, as most things do. Over budget, over time, overwhelmed. You go over budget, the plugins cost too much, or you ran out of money to pay the agency who is building it. The cost of client acquisition is too much. Uh, you're over time, it's just taking too long, you're six months in and you have nothing to show for it, or you just get overwhelmed. There's just too many things, too many moving pieces, too many parts to your vision that you just throw your hands up in the air and you say, I give up, and you move on to the next thing. Or you go get a job. You know, that happens. So it's like, why, why does this thing happen? Well, it's because there's no system. People have this grand vision, and this is awesome, you know? The vision is where it all starts. You have this vision of a product or a website, and you can picture it in your mind, but the steps to getting from where you are now to there are unclear. So you try and recreate this vision as closely as you can, but you can never really seem to get there, uh, and in the pursuit of that vision is what causes you to go over budget, over time, and overwhelm because there's no system. So that system, the system where you get from point A to point B, you reach that vision, that thing you have you had, or better, is what I'm going to share with you today. And it's what I have used to launch over 60 WordPress plugins in my seven-year WordPress career, launched hundreds of WordPress websites for small businesses in Canada and around the world, launched eight courses and many, 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 many more projects, smaller projects, I'm gonna share with you that process that I've used today. So, it's a three-step process. Who could have guessed that? <laughs> so here's my three-step process for launching a WordPress project. Uh, step one, develop. Uh, so the actual development. Uh, step two, deployment. And step three, optimize. Now the thing that makes this special, and um, the thing that makes this work, is that this happens in a 90-day time frame. No longer than 90 days, in many, many cases, shorter than 90 days. I mean, most of the projects that we launch, a lot of the extensions that we launch are developed in a week uh, and then deployed and then optimized. Uh, so this is the 90-day framing because some projects obviously take longer. I understand that. Uh, so this is our 90-day time frame for developing, deploying, and optimizing your next WordPress project. Uh, this, obviously, these three phases get broken down into shorter timelines. Uh, and let's talk about what those are. So, number one, the development phase. So what happens during this phase? Well, any actual development. <laughs> uh, your, your UI, your UX, any CSS, HTML, PHP, custom plugins, asset creations, integrations, WordPress configuration, etc. the list goes on. So the actual development of your product happens during this phase. Pretty self-explanatory. What's not self-explanatory is the priority of which you develop things. Now, uh, what happens is a lot of business owners and a lot of people don't necessarily know how the, the process and the priority of which things you need to focus your attention on so that you can launch and actually take your product to market in the shortest amount of time possible. So I have created what I call the development priority totem pole. If anyone's familiar with what a totem pole is. Uh, essentially, most uh, top priority at the top, lowest priority at the bottom. We're going to start off, uh, the most important thing to get done first is fulfillment. The actual delivery of your promise, your product, your whatever. Are you delivering it? 
Are you delivering it digitally? Is it showing up at a package at our doorstep? Is it through Vimeo? Is it through YouTube? Is it through you know, S3? Like, How are you actually going to deliver on the promise that you're making uh, on your website? So I am in the WordPress product digital uh, fulfillment area because I deliver and sell WordPress plugins. So the third, first thing that we got to do is figure out, well, how are we actually going to deliver our WordPress plugins to you and serve updates and all these things? Because that's kind of important because if I can't do that, then I am not fulfilling on my promise and therefore my business is not fulfilling on its promise and therefore we're gonna go out of business, right? So the first thing that we had to figure out is, well, how are we actually gonna sell these things? And we use Easy Diddle Downloads for that. Many of you are probably familiar with that sales software. Um, and that solved the problem. And we were just able to de develop and iterate on top of that. So number one, get your fulfillment ready. Once you have developed your system for fulfillment and you figured out that, because the reason this is important is because as soon as your fulfillment's done, you can start selling your products, right? You can as I call someone up on the phone and say, give me a credit card number, punch it in the system and then deliver, right? It's a, that's the, the, the faster you have fulfillment done, the faster you can start making money. Uh, number two, payments. You gotta get your payment gateway so that, you know, WooCommerce, easy digital downloads, you're doing WP Simple Pay, so many options for collecting money digitally these days, you gotta get that done. Because again, as soon as you have that set up, if, even if you don't have a landing page, you don't have a website, homepage, you don't have any SEO done, you don't have any of those things done, you can still send people manually to a page where they can buy something through social media, through email marketing, through any other channels that you have. You don't need necessarily need to have the organic channel done first, but as soon as you have payment done, you're good to go. You can say, hey, listen, let's start signing people up and, and you can get the ball rolling. Third priority, sales and marketing. What do I mean by sales and marketing? Uh, any blog posts, any search engine optimization, landing pages, home pages, uh, copywriting, that's the stuff that you do third. So you get your fulfillment done, you get your payment done, get your sales and marketing done. Uh, so that you can start attracting people to your business. You can start attracting people, start bringing them in. Um, the caveat to that one is that before you actually start developing on fulfillment and payment is you might want to set up some sales and marketing to actually do some market validation. In this case, I'm assuming that you've already done your market validation and you know people actually want the thing that you're selling. Um, but it's always useful to do a little bit of sales and marketing research first before you even start this three-step process for delivering on a product uh, and you validate that the market actually wants what you have to give. So I do want to put that caveat in there. But assuming you've already done your market research, you're doing your sales and marketing for the actual delivery of the product uh, third after your fulfillment and payment. So again, sales and marketing, search and engine optimization, landing pages, pricing pages, contact pages, any of that stuff. Four and five. Now these are, as you can see, a little bit transparent and grayed out. That is because these are the, in my personal opinion, the least important things to have set up during the development phase. These are the things, automation and design are the things that are going to prohibit you and stand in the way of you bringing your product, your project to market and getting it out there and getting it in the public. Those two things stand in the way of so many businesses. I see it on a constant, on a, on a constant basis because the products that I sell usually have a lot to do with automation and design. That's, that's, like those, that's my main business. And I see so many people struggle with, with these things and I try to make it as simple as possible, but so many people still struggle and that's just the nature of it. And they focus too much time on it and then they, you know, they, they can the whole WordPress project, their whole thing because they couldn't figure that out. And it breaks my heart every single time. So if you're currently in that space and you're like, I need to have this automated, I need to have this all done, and you have the design perfect and like minutely and like the, you know, no CSS errors or whatever, forget about it. Just don't even bother. These two things come last on the development priority totem pole and should only be even remotely thought of if you finish one, two, and three first and you get those things done. And let's discuss, talk about the time frame for when you actually, uh, or how much time you actually have to deliver on these things. So when does the development phase end? 
your target goal for the development phase should be to have a minimum viable product of your perfect vision. So when you started this project, you had a vision in your mind. You could picture it. You, you close your eyes. You're clicking on things and you're dragging things around or you're opening folders or whatever it is that your thing does. Uh, and you can picture it. And that is currently where you're trying to get to. But newsflash, you're not going to get there in any reasonable amount of time for any reasonable amount of money. That's just, that's, that's, just, that's just the nature of it. I'm sorry to break that to you. So your target goal for the end of the development phase should be an MVP, minimum viable product, uh, which means the bare minimum set of qualifications that you have to be able to uh, honestly uh, and ethically sell someone something and, and actually provide it to them as a service. Um, this part of the development phase is where most projects fall apart because we as designers and developers and product owners and business people and, and creatives are always in the constant pursuit of that perfection, that thing that we have in the back of our mind that we can just see but not quite reach. Uh, and we want to be able to get there before we share it with the general public, before we actually launch it, before we put it you know, before, before we change the DNS records to actually make it a publicly accessible site, right? And the pursuit of that perfection and the pursuit of that vision uh, is, is, is where that over time, that over budget and that overwhelming feeling sets in. So the key to get around that and to step off of the never ending staircase is to get into the deployment phase as quickly as possible. So criteria to end the development phase, these are the questions that you need to be asking yourself at the end of 30 days. So at the end of 30 days, your, develop, which is your, your development phase should last no longer than that period of time. Ask yourself these questions. Does it work if someone visit this from the internet that I don't know, are they gonna be able to find their way to the pricing page? Are they then gonna be able to buy something and then are they going to receive the thing that we promised to give to them when they do that thing? Does your project or the thing that you're bringing to market fulfill on its intended purpose, which is to educate or to entertain possibly or to fulfill a specific business need or a consumer need? Uh, is the design passable, passable in bold? Uh, passable means can they navigate it? Right? Is the menu obvious? Are the buttons obvious? Is the copy done? Are there spelling mistakes? Right? I mean, even if there's spelling mistakes, there's tons of spelling mistakes on Groundhog.io probably still that I haven't found yet, but that doesn't necessarily matter. We still make money. Is it connected to Stripe? Talking about making money. Are you going to be able to collect money through your, through your website or through whatever application it is that you've built? Right? If you have an MVP of your wanted, and which is answering yes to these questions and maybe a few others that I haven't mentioned, that is when the development phase ends and you move into deployment. And, and if you are able to say to yourself, yes, people can use this in its current state. It may not be the best. It may not be the prettiest, but they can use it. And you can say that to yourself. You are 10 steps ahead of literally everybody else because they're still stuck on that perfect vision that they have in their mind that they're not going to be able to get to unless they have billions and billions and billions of seed money, which frankly, I don't think most of us who are on this call do. So that being said, for anything that's not done yet, because again, you have this vision, so you planned out all of the features that you want to have. You didn't get all of those features done in that 30-day time window. Uh, so you're just going to have to cut your losses. Anything that's not done gets a coming soon badge. Just slap coming soon on it. They click on it. It goes to a page that says, this feature is coming soon. Call it a day. That is where you end. Just say, hey, listen, it's coming. It's not available yet, but it will be. Um, so again, any features, anything, any pages that you wanted to have that weren't done in that 30-day time window gets a coming soon page. And that's when we get to move to the deployment phase. If you can get to the deployment phase, everything else becomes 10 times easier. Okay, and if you get to this phase, you are 10 steps ahead of so many other businesses and product developers and designers out there. The key is to get here, and if you get here, you're, you've basically won, you're basically launched, but there's a, few, there's a few caveats to that, and of course, I'll talk about those. So, what's in the deployment phase? Well, obviously, taking whatever you were working on, you were developing, and what you were building in the deployment phase, 
and you move it into a production environment, you change the DNS records, you share it on social media, and you scream to the world, hey, this exists, come check it out. You send a mass email to a list that you might have, et cetera, et cetera. And you just, you just basically just put it out there uh, and, and you internally and psychologically say to yourself, we're live, okay? So that's what happens during the deployment phase. Fairly straightforward. Uh, during this phase, hopefully you are also continuing any leftover development that was not completed during the previous de development phase. So during the deployment phase, uh, while you're making everything live, you're also on the side working on anything that wasn't done yet. So anything with those coming soon pages, for example, you're continuing to work on to deliver on promises that you made. So that's what's happening in your deployment phase. This phase should take one to two weeks. If it takes you longer than two weeks to move things from production to live, I'd seriously you know, ask yourself some questions about what's going on in terms of efficiency or who it is that you're working with. Um, once you start receiving traffic or you're getting people to look at it, people are downloading it, people are buying, et cetera, you can consider yourself deployed. So congratulations. That's the end of the deployment phase. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, so you take whatever you're done here, press the live button. It's obviously a little bit more complex than that, but you know, psychologically press the live button and you're done. You're out there. It's in the world. People can read it. People can see it. People can buy it. People can download it. People can touch it. People can feel it. Congratulations, you did it. A lot of the questions, or when I, when, I, when I share this kind of thinking with people, you know, a lot of people will interrupt me and say, you know, shouldn't we wait until the project is actually finished, right? I don't, because, you know, as creators, a lot of us are perfectionists and we don't want to put something out there on the internet that people can judge us for if it has a coming soon page. It's like, how dare you put up a coming soon page and still expect me to like your product? That's our internal dialogue. That's what we're thinking to ourselves. Uh, and of course, the answer to this question is absolutely not. <laughs> no, we should not wait. Uh, and there's many reasons why we should not wait. Because the longer we wait to deploy and sit on a great idea or product or whatever it is that we have, the more your window of opportunity closes. Uh, all products, all services have a lifespan, uh, have a timeline of when those things are useful. Uh, Tamagotchis, no longer useful. Um, rotary phones, no longer useful. Rolodexes, no longer useful. So there is a window of opportunity for all things. I think there's also a window of opportunity for marketing automation for my own products. There's a window of opportunity for WordPress. It's currently fulfilling on a lot of things, but what's the internet going to look like in 100 years from now? I don't know. Is WordPress going to be around? I don't know. But there's a window of opportunity for these certain things, and that window closes the longer that you wait. So get it out there as soon as possible. The longer you wait to deploy, the more likely it is someone else who's working on something similar will launch first, which is obviously going to hinder your kind of like wow factor and your initial launch factor. Uh, this happens all the time. There's no such thing as an original idea. People have the same ideas on two different sides of the globe all the time. So you obviously want to be first to market. There's obvious advantages that go along with that. Um, the longer you wait to deploy it, the more money and time is wasted when you could have been launched and making money already, right? You can, if, you can, if you're sitting on something that could work and, is, and, and you're using maybe internally but you don't have live yet because it's missing a few things, it's something that could work for somebody else that's also missing a few things. So the longer you're sitting on it, the more money you're wasting on not having it out there. That's called opportunity cost. There is a massive opportunity cost to sitting on something that might be able to work in a live context. Waiting for a WordPress project especially to be done is like waiting for the oceans to dry up. It might happen one day, but it's going to take a really, really, really long time. You can quote that. <laughs> um, it's just not going to happen. There's plug-in updates and conflicts and product changes. And, you know, we, we look at Gutenberg. That wasn't out a few years ago, and now a lot of people use it. Or you look at Elementor, and they totally destroyed the whole concept of having a specific theme for something. Like, you can, now you can just install Elementor or, or Beaver Builder, for example, right? So these products have literally erased opportunity from other products because that's just how technology and that's just how the free market works. So the longer you sit on something, the more likely it is that all these different things are going to change and then your opportunity is missed, right? So you want to make sure that you, while the opportunity is readily available, that you go out and take it as quickly as possible. Okay, so with that kind of question answered and 
reminding ourselves that we should never wait for a WordPress project to be finished because in reality it will never be finished because the, the things just change and that's just the nature of the free market. We can then move on to the optimized phase. So we've deployed, it's been two weeks, you know, we've fixed all kind of like the first initial bugs that happened and, and all of those things. And, and we can, it's kind of like, it's not smooth sailing, but you know, it's passable. We work on optimizing what we have deployed. So this is the process where we collect feedback from users, we improve, add or remove features into the product based on that user feedback. We're installing analytics tools and we're collecting analytics and we're using that data to make informed decisions. We are continuing again on any leftover development that still has that coming soon page on it and making sure that we're getting those things done. So that's what's happening during the optimize phase. How long do we do the optimize for? Uh, or actually, uh, before I talk about that, let's talk about ways that we can actually collect feedback. Uh, so we wanna be able to collect feedback from users. How do we do that? Well, we could just email our customers. Personally, I do this all the time. I have one-on-one -on -one meetings with customers and clients and new users to figure out how we can improve the software and make their experience easier. Uh, you can have a pop-up like this on your website that asks when a fee they use a certain feature, it asks them uh, about any feedback you have about that feature so you can improve it. Uh, you can have live chat on your site. Uh, this is something I think is essential for most businesses to have live chat because if people have problems, then they can get instant answers. Uh, and you can do free live chat through Facebook business chat, by the way, if you're on a budget. And now you're asking yourself, well, how long am I doing this for? You know, how long does the optimized phase end? We've deployed for 30 days. We launched for two weeks, 14 days. When does the optimized phase end? And it doesn't. The optimized phase lasts forever. As long as your business is alive and breathing and collecting people's money, you are always, forever and always, in the optimized phase. In infinity until, you're a biz un until you close shop, essentially. But that being said, let's put a timeline on it. After 40 days, 45 days of optimization, you will be further along than 90 days of development. So remember, our development stage lasts 30 days. But after 30 days deploying and then optimizing for 40, 45, you'll be further along than have you had spent that entire time period on development itself. And you still wouldn't be collecting money. You still will have active users. You still wouldn't be collecting feedback. And you still wouldn't be branded. And you still wouldn't be on social. And you still wouldn't have been accessing all these other channels as well if you had just stayed in the development phase. And now you're launch, And you're out there. And that's probably gonna be a good feeling for you. Because only, we only really see progress when, when someone else validates it for us. And it's hard to get validation from people unless it's out there in the real world and people are looking at it. Um, we, are, as human beings, we are, we, are, we are creatures of ego and we wanna protect that ego as, as, as you know, protectively as we can. So we want to ensure that the thing that we put out there into the universe is really, really, really good. Uh, but sometimes that has a negative effect on ourselves because the pursuit of it being really, 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 really perfect uh, prohibits us from actually getting it out there in the world in the first place. So let's review. Uh, stage one, develop. Create an MVP that has the basic features that you need, passable design, you can fulfill on its promise, and you can collect money with it. Basically, just passable. Like it gets the job done, good enough, seal of approval, that process lasts 30 days. Step two, deploy, deployment phase, going from staging to production or releasing your new product for the first time, fixing any issues or bugs on the go, uh, and start sending traffic and accessing your channels of distribution immediately. That lasts 14 days. Step three, optimize, collecting user feedback and analytics and use that to focus your efforts and energy and attention on the features that users care about and improving them and making them better. And of course, continuing to develop on any leftover uh, implementation that you weren't able to previously develop. All of this obviously less than 90 days, and then you do it all again. What do I mean by do it all again? Well, as I said, the optimize, optimize phase never really ends, but there's always new products that you wanna bring to market, there's always new features, and you can use this specific process, this three-step process for every new feature, every new product, every new channel, every new thing that you wanna put to the market and share with the universe the value that you have you just do it all again, and I wrote some code there for any of the developers in the room that are having a nice laugh at this. Uh, so it's just a recursive function. Every single time you, you sleep, you wake up, you do it all again, you sleep, you wake up, you do it all again. 
WordPress projects are never done. They just get better over time. That, that's really how I think about business in general. Uh, if your business reaches a state where you feel like it's complete, that's time to close up shop. You, if, you, if you feel like your business is done, you have, you have essentially just told yourself or, or, or granted the universe the fact that you, your business no longer has any value left to give to the general public or, or to your market. If you're not constantly working on improving and making your systems and processes better and, and being able to think about how can I better provide certain values or, or entertainment to my customers, well, you know, that's, that's kind of the end of it. So again, WordPress projects are never done. They just get better over time. I want to thank you for spending the last 30 minutes with me. I've really appreciated it. I know it's a lot asking for people to take 30 minutes out of their very busy schedules these days. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, I'd love to have you be a part of it. Uh, I personally am on pretty much all the social media sites, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can at me, continue the conversation. And you can also tweet my organization, Groundhog, uh, through all of those uh, social media channels as well. Again, thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see everyone soon. Thanks and enjoy the rest of WordCamp India 2021.